The views and opinions expressed in The Fact Is with Hollis Grant are those of Hollis Grant and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Droids Canada Network. Droids Canada Network does not take responsibility for any content or position produced by Hollis Grant and his show. Listener discretion is advised. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of The Fact Is. I am your host, Hollis Grant. Now, in today's episode, it's an interesting topic that we have, and one that comes down to accountability. So accountability of a politician. And who are they accountable for? Now, we're going to take a look at one particular politician that we are going to be singling out. And it is a a Canadian politician, Omar Algebra. Now, this particular individual is a part of the Justin Trudeau Liberals. He is a transportation minister, and he is also in charge of the Arrive Can app that was recently removed. That was the application that all Canadians or all individuals entering Canada had to fill out, and all their information was submitted into a government website so that they could monitor and take a look at where people were going in terms of covid protocol or ensuring that people were vaccinated and that they were adhering to their uh, quarantine status. Now, what information was pulled out from this application, what information was used on their phones has yet to be leaked out given the track record of this particular government and looking at the Phoenix payment plan, which was quite a few years ago, it was a computer software that was to pay individuals. There was a problem in terms of the payroll where people weren't getting paid for over a year. So if the Liberal government used these people to um, look at a payroll and can't roll out a payroll software, how confident are you having your personal information installed on a government contract for this application? Now, in Canada, and we've covered this before on past episodes, you can go back to droidscanada.com slash Hollis, show Hollis. You can go back and take a look at our past episodes. One of our episodes, we did talk about the funding, the federal funding that goes into picking out where a journalist is. There are bills in place and there's laws in place to determine who is a journalist or what a journalist is. So when the government and the liberal government decides who and who cannot have journalistic um, credibility, it now takes something away for people that are starting a media company or starting a a blog um, with the internet and with technology. Anyone can do this. Anyone can start a podcast and report on information and everyone is a reporter. The reporters are telling a story. So if you're not accredited and if you're not a journalist or a quote unquote journalist by the government standards, then how could you ever get an interview on an individual? So if you were to call up a particular a member of parliament or anyone else, they're more likely to ignore you because you're not a reputable or quote-unquote reputable reporter. So how do these individuals get to the story? How are they allowed to talk to people? Because they can't. And when you have a liberal government that's restricting speech and restricting journal- journalists, then how do these people and in independent media talk to these individuals. So I'm going to play a clip, and this is from a, a company called Rebel News, and they're a, um, has been described as a right-wing um, company or reporting. They definitely are not fans of communism. They're definitely not fans of unions. But to label and slap labels on, we've covered that on our very first episodes. They're telling a different side of the story. So, nonetheless, they have been excluded from Election Canada events. They did go to court, and those um, decisions to ban them from the uh, leadership debates were overturned, and the courts agreed that these people are allowed to be here, that they are considered journalists. But the Trudeau government still has limits for this particular organization and won't allow them to get close to talk to these people 
uh, to the leaders in the Liberal Party. So this brings us to this particular clip, uh, and, and I'll set this up. This was a, about three months ago, and the reporter comes up to see the member of parliament walking down the street. Now, he can't talk to him through media scrums. He can't talk to him by setting up an interview because he would get ignored. So he goes up to approach the individual walking from the Commons, House of Commons, and walking to a car. The car is a government car, and it has a chauffeur. So I'll play the clip, and we'll just hear how this was conducted. Rebel News. What did you think of the fact that Canada is the only country with China and North Korea that doesn't allow unvaccinated citizens to travel to the planet? How are you, sir? I'm super good. How about you? I'm fine. Can you answer my question? When will the travel mandates end for unvaccinated citizens? Does Ontario have a different? Does Ontario have a different science than the federal government? Do you have like different scientists? Do you have different scientists? Are you able to answer one question, sir? You've been elected by the people. Sir, is there any? Sir, is there any hope for unvaccinated travelers to board a plane or a train? Is there there any hope forever? forever? As I said, science is. But the science changes. Ontario is not the same as the federal. Do you have different scientists? Different scientists? Sir, is there any hope for unvaccinated Some travelers point. anytime have soon? China and North Korea, sir. Now, if you notice the response, have a good evening, have a good evening, have a good evening. The, the member of parliament was presented with questions and he just responded, have a good evening, have a good evening, to pay no mind. Now, you may say, well, that's just one instance. So here we go with a, another altercation with a journalist from Rebel News and the same member of Parliament, Omar Algebra. Mr. Algebra, yesterday the Conservatives brought forward a motion to denounce the threatening tweets of a accredited journalist. Why did some Liberals say nay to that? How are you today? Do you not care about the safety of politicians in the House of Commons? How are you today? I'm great. How about you? Are you able to answer our question? I'm enjoying this walk. Why do you refuse to denounce journalists that threaten conservative politician. Are you doing well? Are you able to answer a question or is that just not in your mandate? You know, conservatives always answer our question. Why can't you do that? I'm glad you're doing well. You're not able to, eh? I'm really happy for you and I wish you success in your career. What change in the science between now and in two days in terms of lifting the arrive cap or was it just political science? Oh, you took your glasses off. What? You took your glasses off. Yeah. That's good. So are you able to answer? You're not able. Is it intelligence or just you don't want to? (laughs) All right, last question from me. Uh, You know, you always talk about affordability or liberal parties say they want to fight for affordability. Yet you're planning on raising the taxes on on continuing the, uh, the carbon tax. Why won't you cut the taxes? Watch this. Have a nice day. Why won't you cut the taxes? All right, sir. Have a great day. Good luck with this parliamentary session. Now, how can an individual or a reporter track down the story when they're limited on where they can and can't report? How are they to get the information? If they're just to go with the information that's presented in the House of Commons, how are they to ask a little further questions or a little bit more information for the people that are in charge of the particular program? For instance, the Arrive Can app. If this particular minister is in charge of that application and the implementing and the running and all that data that's being collected and where does it go and and who has it and where is it served or what servers are it on how long is that information on record for who has access to it will that information be sold if those questions aren't answered in the house of commons if they're not answered anywhere else you can ask those questions outside but should politicians Respond. Should politicians just completely ignore individuals? Should they just not care? It's not like this individual was on his free time or sitting in a restaurant with his family and or sitting in a park on a Saturday or on a Sunday afternoon when he's not working, when he's at an event, maybe opening a local uh, shop that's that's open for business, for instance. 
it's not in an official capacity. So if he's walking to his car while he's still on the clock, essentially, he should be able to be able to ask questions. You can see from the reporters not harassing, reporters not rude in any way, but yet is met with silence. Is this how politicians should act? Or does it show a sign of arrogance, a sign of elitism, where you're not worthy enough of an answer? You're not who we think are acceptable. So no, we are not going to talk to you. No, you do not have any right to hear my answer because we don't acknowledge you. We don't care about you and we're not going to answer you. Is this the type of politician that you want representing you? One thing that I would highly recommend doing is taking the time to meet your local candidate come election time. Go into their office, arrange a call, and if they have the respect to give you an actual answer and to speak with you and not give a generic political answer where they don't answer the question, they talk around the question. Why would you give these people your vote? I'd like to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you have yourself a great week. And thank you for listening to The Fact Is. I'm your host, Hollis Grant. Denon. Denon. Den, 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 den. Salsa Shark. We're going to need a bigger boat. Throughout history, they have been a part of our Canadian life. Men and women who have made their mission to entertain their fellow man. They've worked hard enough. Isn't it time they had their own podcast? You're right, it's Canada. This podcast would be great if it wasn't for the internet trolls. I don't bother them and they don't bother me. I could do without the bad reviews in the iTunes store. Do you have that podcast with that guy who was at that Comic-Con in the last year? You should hear the barrage of the stupid questions I get on our SoundCloud account. What do you mean there was coughing? How am I going to hear a podcast with coughing? you feel a lot better if you just rip into the occasional guest. You're a host who doesn't get paid. You can't just do anything you want while you're recording. What kind of podcast are you running here anyways? Droids Canada Podcast present. You think anyone can see us down here? Why, you think you want to have sex or something? Can we? Droids Canada Podcast. The only show to rip off a clerk's trailer. You hate people! But I love Comic-Cons. Isn't it ironic?